AT&T Corporation, formerly known as American Telephone and Telegraph Company from 1899 to 1994, is an American corporation that provides long-distance telephone and other telecommunication services. It is a branch of the American Telephone and Telegraph Company, which built most of the United States long-distance and local telephone networks. It eventually became the world's largest corporation and a standard for the telecommunications industry. This body firm split their accord into three smaller companies in 1996, and one of them retained the AT&T name. However, this company didn't just become the world's largest company overnight. In this video, we would be looking at the AT&T company story to see how they achieved this feat. Before we continue, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button below to get a notification on our next video. The company's origins go back to 1876, when Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone and made the first wire transmission of understandable speech. He secured a patent for the device, and in 1877 he made up the Bell Telephone Company together with his two investors, Gardner C. Hubbard and Thomas Sanders. They eventually sold the company the next year to a group of investors. By this time, the Bell Company was already involved in a competition with the leading telegraph company, Western Union Company, for the development of telephone service. Western Union had earlier acquired its telephone devices and its patents. Bell's interests were represented by Theodore N. Vail, who was general manager from 1878 to 1887, and led the patent fight against Western Union. In 1879 Western Union, which already had a war of control between the Vanderbilt and Jay Gould, agreed to give up all its telephone patents, claims, and facilities if Bell's promised not to go into the telegraph business. After a series of organizations and retitling, the company became Bell Telephone Company between 1878 and 1900. In 1881, Bell acquired Western Electric a leading maker of telegraphic equipment, making them the dominant manufacturer of telephone equipment. The Bell Telephone Laboratories was formed in 1883 as the company's mechanical department and was incorporated as a separate company in 1925. In 1885, Bell established the American Telephone and Telegraph Company, or AT&T, as its subsidiary responsible for building long-distance telephone lines. In 1899, AT&T was made the parent company of the Bell system. By 1894, the Bell Company's patent on the telephone expired and it faced growing competition from independent phone companies and telephone manufacturers. Vail was accepted into the company as president in 1907. He later retired in 1919, but not without shaping AT&T into the organization that lasted until 1984. Vail had an objective to obtain a monopoly for AT&T over the American telecommunications industry. He fused the Bell Associated companies into state and regional organizations, bought many former independent companies, and gained control over Western Union in 1910. In 1913, a commitment first voiced, but later confirmed by the Graham Willis Act of 1921, AT&T, as a natural monopoly, agreed to provide long-distance service to all independent telephone companies. By 1939, AT&T was in control of 83% of all U.S. telephones and 98% of all long-distance telephone lines. They also manufactured 90% of all U.S. phone equipment. In 1949, the Justice Department sued AT&T under the Sherman Antitrust Act, seeking the dissolution of Western Electric from the Bell system among other things. The suit ended in 1956 in a consent decree, leaving Western Electric in the system though with restricted monopolistic practices. That didn't hinder at NT's growth, and by the 1970s it had almost 1 million employees making it the largest company in the world. They had total assets that exceeded those of General Motors, the Exxon Corporation, and the Mobile Corporation combined. In 1974, the United States revisited the case with a second antitrust suit for the dismemberment of the Bell system. After years of lawsuit, AT&T and the U.S. Department of Justice settled in 1982. The agreement was for AT&T to strip itself of 22 regional operating companies that would become distinct entities and operate local telephone networks. 
The 22 regional operating companies were stripped by January 1, 1984, and were reorganized and converted into seven regional phone companies, Ninex, Bell Atlantic, Ameritech, or American Information Technologies Incorporated, BellSouth, Southwestern Bell Corporation, U.S. West, and Pacific Telesis Group. AT&T surrendered the use of the name Bell to these companies, which became informally known as Baby Bells. Though they were out of the local network business, AT&T remained the nation's largest provider of long-distance telephone service. The company hadn't lost its Western Electric subsidiary, the manufacturers of telephones and other equipment, and Bell Telephone Laboratories the research and development arm. Also, the company could now venture into previously forbidden fields like data processing and computer communications. The need to penetrate that market gave rise to the purchase in 1991 of NCR Corporation, a major manufacturer of computers, electronic cash registers, and other data processing systems. By 1994, AT&T also purchased Macaw Cellular Communications Incorporated, the nation's largest provider of cellular telephone service. Also in 1994, the company formally adopted its traditional name, AT&T, and became the AT&T Corporation. In 1996, AT&T divided its operations into three separate companies. This was done to compete more effectively in an American telecommunications industry that had just been deregulated by the federal government. The AT&T Corporation was the largest of the three, and they continued to provide long-distance telecommunications services. A second company, Lucent Technologies Incorporated, made and marketed telephones, network switching equipment, computer chips, and other hardware, and also picked up most of the Bell Laboratories. The third company was the NCR Corporation. At NT's self-imposed dismantling was the largest corporate breakup in history. AT&T provided the United States with the largest, most advanced, and most efficient telecommunications network of any nation in the world. They pioneered most of the major technical advances made in telephone service, switching systems, and signal transmission during the 20th century. AT&T first introduced the building of transoceanic radio telephone links and telephone cable systems, built early warning radar systems for the U.S. Department of Defense, and created the Telstar Satellite Communication System. And in 1948, Bell Labs, one of the world's foremost research centers, invented the transistor. It always seemed the AT&T company had always progressed well at gaining market share. In more recent years, the story gets ironic. After struggling for years, a former piece of the monopoly, SBC Communications Southwestern Bell acquired AT&T in 2005 for $16 billion. They assumed the more time-honored name, AT&T, and was once again on the map as one of the top dogs. The new AT&T made many more acquisitions through the past decade and a half, including Singular Wireless, BellSouth, Cricket, and eventually DirecTV. Now with business segments in the traditional phone, wireless, and television, AT&T is a driving force within the modern era of media. In September 2013, AT&T announced its intention to expand into Latin America through a collaboration with Carlos Slim's America Mobile. However, on the 17th day of December 2013, AT&T announced plans to sell its Connecticut wireline operations to Stanford-based Frontier Communications. About 2,700 wireline employees in Connecticut would have to transfer with the business to Frontier, as well as 900,000 voice connections, 415,000 broadband connections, and 180,000 Uverse video subscribers. A year later, the acquisition of DirecTV proved beneficial for AT&T, and enhanced the market shares of AT&T that raised the company purchase. The purchase allowed AT&T to install optic fibers and satellite links for the development of the reception and maintenance of the DirecTV. The idea was accepted by the FCC regulatory body for implementation in Latin America and the US. Now AT&T has expanded the telecommunications business locally into AT&T Wireless Services, AT&T Mobility, AT&T DirecTV, AT&T Uverse, etc. AT&T works on the three main fundamentals in telecommunication transmission, 
management, and switching ATANT continues at a flexible pace to stay abreast of the current technological inventions to tweak the products and the customer services to appeal to the customers. They played a pivotal role in enhancing the transmission of communication. Also, its wireless, mobility, and InfoVision services are one of the largest selling and globally admired services. By 2013, over 2 million employees were making AT&T a total revenue of about $128.752 billion in the same fiscal year. On July 12, 2013, AT&T announced its possible acquisition of Leap Wireless, Cricket, for $1.2 billion. The deal stated AT&T will be acquiring all of Leap's towers, stores, and 5.3 million subscribers. The Federal Communications Commission approved the merger between AT&T and Leap Wireless on March 13, 2014. On October 20, 2016, it was reported that AT&T was looking to acquire Time Warner to increase its media holdings. On the 22nd, AT&T officially announced a deal to buy Time Warner for $108.7 billion. If the federal regulators approved the merger, it would bring at and T's telecommunication holdings under the same category as HBO, Turner Broadcasting System, and the Warner Brothers Studio. February 15, 2017, saw the approval of the merger by Time Warner shareholders. On February 28, FCC Chairman Ajit Pai announced that his agency will not review the deal, leaving that to the U.S. Department of Justice. On March 15, 2017, the European Commission approved the merger. However, the United States Department of Justice informed AT&T and Time Warner on November 8, 2017, that they must sell either DirecTV or Turner Broadcasting System, the group of channels that includes CNN if they want approval for their $84.5 billion merger. AT&T CEO Randall Stevenson stated that he didn't want to do that. On November 20, 2017, Assistant Attorney General Makin Delrahim filed a lawsuit under the Clayton Act of 1914 to block the acquisition. On March 13, 2018, AT&T filed a trademark for AT&T TV with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, a possible sign that the telco company was ready to change the old names DirecTV and Uverse. On June 14, 2018, the acquisition of Time Warner was completed, and Time Warner was retitled Warner Media. In September 2018, AT&T then reorganized operations into four main units, communications, including consumer and business wireline telephony, AT&T Mobility, and consumer entertainment video services, Warner Media, including Turner Cable Television Networks, Warner Brothers Film and Television Production, and HBO, AT&T Latin America, consisting of wireless service in Mexico and video in Latin America and the Caribbean under the Vrio brand and advertising and analytics, since renamed Xander. On February 26, 2019, it was announced that the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals upholds the AT&T acquisition of Time Warner. On April 24, 2020, AT&T announced that effective July 1, 2020, company CEO John Stanky will replace Randall Stevenson as CEO of AT&T. AT&T has continued to wax stronger, and if you consider the revenue aspect and market value, it won't be unworthy to list AT&T among the largest telecommunication providers of the era. What do you think about the AT&T company story? What do you think of their many acquisitions? Thanks for watching this video. Please share your opinions in the comments section below, and remember to click the subscribe button to be the first person to watch new videos on this channel.